We saw a question like this in the first module for this practice test, and it's definitely something the SAT likes to do. We have this three variable equation that we have to manipulate. By far, the fastest way to do these is to just know the algebra confidently enough that you can manipulate it. I will show you another way, but like we really want to get this down. So if you need some guidance, the way to think about it is to remember germdas, which is PEMDAS. Some of you call it that. And uh, I call it uh, germdas for a couple reasons, but we don't need to know them for this particular question. Um, now, if we're being asked to solve for n, right, that's kind of what the choices are making it clear as well as the question itself. Basically what we're doing is algebra. We're stripping things away from the n until that n is by itself. So when we're doing algebra, we actually go through germdas backwards, okay? This is solving. Normally we learn PEMDAS, germdas as a way to simplify things and just kind of take one side of an equation and, and condense it into something more manageable. Um, and that's really useful. In that case, we go from left to right. But when we're doing algebra, remember, algebra is basically math, but backwards. So it makes sense that we would do the order of operations in reverse. So how is that going to work here? Well, I would take my 7m equals 5 times n plus p. And I could distribute that 5. But that's a simplifying step, right? Because it only happens on one side of the equation, that's simplifying. If it only happens on one side, if it happens on both sides, that's solving. So what I would do is, since I'm trying to solve, I am going to move the five first. So if I'm looking at germdas in reverse, my first step is actually to do addition and subtraction. So you'd think, okay, well, we've got addition here, n plus p, why not subtract the p? Well, because our last step is the G, the groupings, the parentheses, right? So we can't get into those parentheses until we've moved everything else away from it. So in this case, there's no addition or subtraction we can do to start because the addition and subtraction are locked into the parentheses. So instead, we're moving on to step two here. Ooh, why can't I draw? Ah, which is multiplication or division. And so that's why we have five being multiplied by this piece, but instead we're going to use division to make it go away. So we divide both sides by five. This crosses out the five. And then I'm just going to rewrite it. 7m over 5 is equal to n plus p. And notice now I'm not using the parentheses because everything around them is dead, is broken, and so now we have, we've kind of broken into these this grouping, and now that kind of resets things, right? So once we get to the end of the line with germdas, we go back to the start, and each grouping is kind of treated like its own mini equation, and now again, our first step is to do addition and subtraction, and now we can do it, right? So we can subtract p from both sides. And when we do that, since P is not the same kind of term as this 7 fifths M, we can just um, keep it separate. 7 uh, M over 5 minus P is equal to N, and that's kind of reversed, but 7 M over 5 minus P is choice B. So there we go. That is the best way to do it for many of you. Uh, hopefully, even just my slower explanation of the algebra was not necessary. You just have intuitive uh, understandings of what order things need to go in. But if you are in any way uncertain, right, if you kind of find yourself in this module and you don't, you don't feel comfortable enough in algebra to do something like this, then we need a backup. And we could arithmetize. We have a calculator and none of these variables actually matter. So we can make up some numbers for them and just see what happens. So what I would do is just make up, let's say n is 1, p is 2, just to get some variety. So 7m is equal to 5 times 1 plus 2. So 7m is equal to 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 times 5 is 15, and then divide both by 7 to get m alone. And m is going to be, I'm going to just use the calculator here, this one, this little one, 15 divided by 7, is... 2.14. Okay. I don't care it's a messy number and I'm rounding it a little bit. But that's okay. So now what do I do? I go to all the answer choices and I know that n is supposed to be 1. So I'm plugging in the 2 for my p, I'm plugging in this 2.14 for m, and I'm seeing which one gives me the n that I'm looking for. So if I go to choice a, right, that's going to be 5 times, we said p is 2, and n, m we're just rounding to this 2.14, so it might not be perfectly accurate. But that's 10 divided by 2.14 times 7, which is 14.98. And I just know, without even doing any more math, that's not going to be equal to 1, right? Because 10 over 10 would be 1, not 10 over 14.98. So that's wrong. 
Now compare that to choice B, that's seven times the 2.14 over five minus P is two. So seven times 2.14, I just did that, is 14.98. I don't know why I'm doing it again. Divided by five minus two. So now you might see, okay, well, 14.98 is really supposed to be 15 if I didn't round, but even without it, 14.98 divided by five is 2.996 minus two is 0 0.996, basically close to one, really close, right? So that would probably be the answer. I would need to do the same thing for the other two. Um, I can do it really quickly, five times seven times 2.14 plus two. Obviously this isn't one, seven times 2.14 is that 14.98 times five is even bigger, plus two is even bigger, so that's gonna be wrong. And seven times 2.14 minus five minus two. So again, that's 14 or close to 15, minus five minus two, not gonna be one. So this is definitely a more tedious approach. Arithmetize is great for a lot of things on the digital SAT, but it, it's not really gonna be the best way to do this because the algebra is just so much faster. But if you consistently mess up algebra, then maybe you do need to try some arithmetizing here because I'd rather you get these points. The questions are only gonna get harder, so I'd rather you lock these points in than worry about these things that you're also gonna struggle with because if you can't do this algebra, what's coming is not gonna be easier. So um, just try to find that place where you can maximize your points between doing it the traditional way and using strategies as needed. So it's, it's a tough place to find, but more practice, you will find that happy place for yourself.